The mirror is one of the friends I have written about in my book. He was really a friend. It was really a friend. It, it helped me find out a lot of things about myself. Uh, most importantly, what my strengths were. I began to realize this quite early because as I, as I said, by the time I was 13 or 14, I had resolved I want to be an actor. I never ever wanted to be anything else except a cricketer and I, I knew I could not manage that. I think, you see, in the, in the school I was in, we saw a lot of movies, a lot of great actors. We saw Laurence Olivier, we saw Charles Lawton, Marlon Brando. Among these films, we also were visited by a troupe called Shakespeareana, which used to perform selections from Shakespeare, sometimes from Shaw, sometimes from Oscar Wilde, for the students of the school. They used to come there every single year. Mr. Jeffrey Kendall was the actor manager who, who ran this troupe. And when I saw him for the first time, I could not believe I was seeing such great acting in the flesh. So far, I'd seen Olivier and I'd seen Lawton, uh, Gilgood and, and uh, some of Dilip Kumar's films also. Uh, but I felt that these people are not real. These people who act in movies are not real. These are photographic tricks. They don't look like real people. They don't behave like real people. This world doesn't look real. And then I saw Mr. Kendall on stage and I was completely mesmerized by his performance, by his presence, by his voice, by his versatility. I must have been about six or seven when I first saw Mr. Kendall and continued to watch him because they visited our school every year. And he gradually, over within a year, became my favorite actor. All of us had a favorite actor, um, a favorite cricketer, etc. Mr. Kendall became my favorite actor and st has stayed my favorite actor. And it's not only because, because he, he fed me such dreams and gave me so much joy as a child. Uh, Devanand's films also gave me a lot of joy. Shammi Kapoor's films also gave me a lot of joy. Uh, but nobody affected me the way Mr. Kendall did. It was many years later, of course, that I realized what his true greatness was. Not that he could change his voice and his appearance and his acting and his manner and everything. But the fact that all he was concerned with was serving the text. And all his abilities were geared towards serving and conveying the text. Not once did I feel that this man was chewing the scenery, that he was trying to show off how good an actor he was. And I mean, we, we, we're just submerged with actors who are trying to show off how good they are all the time. You know, we have actors playing 10 and 12 parts in a single movie. I, I really can't understand what the urge is to do a thing like that. Because I don't think you're, you're, you're serving anybody except your own ego by doing that. And I think that was the true greatness of Mr. Kendall. I, I have tried to emulate him. My life has been very different, of course. Mr. Kendall lived in a hand-to-mouth existence. He never had a home. He never had any money. He never had a car. He never had any transport. He, he just had his mission. I've been luckier. I've been able to pay my tribute to Mr. Kendall, and I've had a good life. But, uh, but I really think that without Mr. Kendall's input, I, I might not have become an actor. I might not have had the courage because as I said, I really believed that, that actors were not human beings. Mr. Kendall made me realize that they are.